We are about a week in to unit seven, our unit on mountain building, and we are just now going to finally start talking about mountains. We spent a week talking about how rocks can be deformed, and this section, section 7.2, we are gonna be learning about different types of mountains. So let's dive right in. Mountains are classified based on how they are formed. We're going to be learning about four different types of mountains, and we are going to be dividing them up based on the processes that form them. We're going to go over each of them individually here today. Uh, all the processes that form mountains are going to cause deformation of rock of some sort, so we could easily relate these different mountain building processes back to our types of deformation, uh, brittle or ductile, we can relate them back to the stresses that are going to cause them. Are they going to be compressional, tensional, maybe some shear stresses? And we could relate that back to where we would expect to find these st stresses, what type of boundaries we would expect to see them at. And as we talk about this process of mountain building, I want to introduce a word because this is science class. And yes, of course, we have a word for that. Orogenesis is the term that means the process of building a mountain range. So as we talk about these types of mountains and we talk about processes that build mountains, we are talking about orogenesis. First type of mountain range we are going to look at is folded mountains. Folded mountains are mountains primarily formed by folding. You can imagine that these are going to be formed by compressional stress. You can see all these very uh, wavy rock layers here. There has been a lot of force compressing this rock from both sides, causing it to fold upward. And as we get lots and lots and lots of folding and lots of compression from the sides, we can start to cause breaks and we can start to cause these thrust faults. I mentioned when we first learned about thrust faults that one bit of rock is forced basically on top of another one. They're really low angle uh, fault lines and thrust faults. And with folded mountains, a lot of times we'll see these mountain ranges, these rock layers folded and then thrusted one on top of the other with all of these thrust faults. So we see these at places where we have lots and lots of compression, uh, lots and lots of force pressing rocks together. Sounds a lot like continental continental convergent boundaries. Uh, we're going to focus more on the processes in our next section, but that's where we're generally going to see these types of mountains. Next type of mountains is fault block mountains. Now I'm going to spend a lot of time on this type of mountain relative to the other ones, just because they are so relevant to where we happen to be in the world. We happen to be real near a really, really large system of fault block mountains that I'm going to introduce you to a little later in the lecture. So fault block mountains are formed by very large normal faults. Uh, don't worry, in the next slide, I will remind you of what normal faults look like if you have forgotten. Um, but you can just remember that normal faults are the one caused by tensional stress. The hanging wall goes up and the foot wall, or the hanging wall goes down and the foot wall goes up. Those are our uh, normal faults. And fault block mountain ranges tend to have lots and lots of normal faults right next to each other, really big ones and they end up forming these long and narrow mountains with long and narrow valleys in between them. So let's look at parts of a fault block mountain in terms of the faults. So as I said, we're gonna start off with normal faults. We've got lots of normal faults. Remember these guys are caused by tensional stress. We are pulling these blocks, these different pieces of this fault apart, and that is what is causing this to happen. So in the middle, is where our hanging walls would be. This is the area above our two fault lines. Remember, this is a side view. And we've got a special name for that in this case. It is called a grabbin. And remember, the hanging walls move down. So as we have these blocks being pulled apart, this middle section here called the grabbin is going to move downwards. And underneath the normal faults, the other blocks we have are called horsts and the horsts are going to be moving upwards. So the horsts are the foot walls and the grabbins are the hanging walls. Uh, and the grabbins move down, the horsts move up. 
So Grabbins and Horsts are what are going to form these alternating valleys and mountain ranges. Obviously, the Horsts moving up are going to be the mountains, and the Grabbins moving down are going to be the valleys. And this is just two normal faults creating uh, one of these fault block mountain systems. But we can get dozens of these over the course of thousands of kilometers. Um, and when I say these are big normal faults, I mean that the mountains created by these fault blocks can be sometimes over 10,000 feet tall. Um, so they can create some really, really big structures. And I want to look at a particular area in the United States where these we see this happening. That is called the Basin and Range Province. So take a look right here in the southwestern U.S. Uh, California is over here. Edwards is probably right here, kind of on the bottom left-hand corner of this basin and range province. And all this really crinkly part of the map, where it looks like there's a lot of mountains here in the middle, that is the basin and range province. This is a geographic area in the western U.S. characterized by long, narrow mountain ranges and valleys. You can imagine that the mountains are going to be horsts and the valleys are going to be gravens. This is all created by uh, fault block mountains. This whole big area is a series of fault block mountain ranges. And why is this happening? Well, the continental plate happens to, in this area, be under extension. It is spreading apart, possibly the development of a new spreading center, possibly continental rifting, what we learned about in the last unit. We did mention that there is some volcanic activity around here. Um, you can see old lava flows if you are driving north in the Owens River Valley near us. Uh, so there's lots of evidence that there is continental stretching. There is some extension of the plate going on here, and these fault block mountain ranges further in reinforce that. So all, again, all of these mountain ranges are fault block mountains, and there are some really high highs and some really low lows in here. Uh, we have things like Mount Whitney, which is the tallest mountain in the lower uh, 48 states, is part of this range right over here. We also have Death Valley, just a couple valleys over from Mount Whitney, the lowest point in uh, the continental United States, also in this same basin and range area. So we have blocks of earth moving down and blocks of earth moving up, forming these valleys and mountain ranges. Really cool thing that's going on right here and is still happening. Next type of mountain I wanna talk about is upwarped mountains. These guys are pretty simple. Basically, forces inside of the earth push upwards and lift these mountains up. Uh, you can think of it like a big anticline. And in general, when we look at these, we're gonna find the oldest rocks in the center of these mountains and the youngest rocks at the edge, because as we are pushing up that area in the middle, that's gonna contain the oldest rocks that are pushed to the surface. So these upwarped mountains, I say they're caused by forces within the earth uh, lifting up the crust in one spot. This could be a very large mass of magma rising up that never quite, get to the, quite gets to the surface. This could be a mantle plume that is pushing up the crust in one spot, but maybe it hasn't caused enough melting to cause a hot spot to form volcanoes or something like that. These are the kind of forces that are gonna push up from the bottom and formed these upwarped mountains. And you can see that right here in this picture. We've got some force from underneath the crust, whether it's a mantle plume or whether it's rising magma, pushing up. And you can see it is bending these layers of rock. And they look kind of like an anticline. Last type of mountain is volcanic mountains. And yep, you guessed it. These are mountains or ranges formed by volcanic activity. Pretty not exciting. Magma erupts from the earth, builds up the mountain over time in multiple eruptions. Uh, these we can see at a couple places. We've learned some different types of volcanoes that can be formed at the edges of plate boundaries, such as continental volcanics arcs and continental island or volcanic island arcs. So we might see these mountains at the different types of boundaries that form those features. We also can see them formed in the middle of plates with things like hotspots volcanoes. So these volcanic mountains might be part of larger continental boundaries, or they might be just a hotspot volcano in the middle of a plate all on its own. So overall, we learned about four different types of mountains today. 
fault block mountains, upwarp mountains, volcanic mountains, and folded mountains. And we learned that mountains are divided up by the processes that form them.